Well, today is the uh, last in our series, Rebooting My Faith. And um, so far, we've looked at reading God's Word to deepen our relationship. We've looked at rebooting our two-way prayer life. Uh, and uh, last week was about being good stewards with, with what we have been entrusted with uh, by God and, 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 and sort of stepping back and rethinking about how do I use, uh, use all of that. And today is about self-care. Now, one of the problems as you mentioned about self-care is, well, what Bible passage would you use about self-care? Because there is no um, sort of like some part of the Sermon on the Mount about self-care. There's sort of like no Matthew 6.35 that sort of says something like, because um, 6.34 says, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. And then it would have, you know, Jesus doesn't go on to then say, so you need to care for yourself so you can deal with today's troubles. Because uh, if you don't care for yourself, you won't be able to deal with today's troubles. Uh, so there's actually sort of like really, you, you know, you, there's no sort of commandment, you know, like we're told to love God, um, but, you know, to care for yourself. Uh, that is actually it needs to be drawn out uh, from principles within what Scripture says. So hopefully we can do that today. Hopefully um, uh, what I have gleaned from Scripture will be of help and is uh, honouring to God. So in order to make sure that uh, we get, uh, well, we ask for God's help in being able to uh, understand what he's trying to say to us, we need to pray to him. So let's just pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you, firstly, that you created us. Secondly, you never abandoned us. You have been pursuing us down through history. Um, thirdly, you know us. Um, and, uh, and you want that relationship with us. But above all, your care and your love is amazing. So as we look at your word, may we again experience that amazing grace that comes from you. May we be in awe of the love that you show us and may it help us to live in a way that honors you and yeah that brings you uh, brings you pleasure because we're doing your will so just be with us now and uh, really speak into our hearts your words that you want us to hear and i thank you that you hear our prayers amen um, like I said, there is not any sort of passage that you can really jump to, but there's plenty of examples. Uh, one of the ones that I really like and uh, is in um, is the life of Elijah. Now, I find Elijah a fascinating guy, uh, especially around the battle between Elijah and the priests of Baal that he had on Mount Car uh, Carmel. And, and what happened afterwards? You know, if you haven't read it, then I'd recommend that you go uh, and have a read in One Kings um, eighteen and uh, around that area, and just have a read of what happened when he was standing. He, he was standing there and saying, "God is both relatable and He's reliable. You can trust God." And so he has this competition with the priests of Baal, of course, which. Um, <laughs> Elijah wins because of what God does. And so there's this amazing victory. The priests of Baal are put to death because they were leading the people astray. And you'd think, yeah, Elijah, well done. You know, you trusted God and God came through. So this is great. Uh, but then when he's threatened by Queen Jezebel, uh, he runs, uh, which I always find interesting that, you know, you've had this amazing victory, amazing proof of God's with you and hearing you. And, and then someone comes along and says, you're dead. You're dead, mate. I'm a, you know, I've got my eye on you, you're dead. And he just does a runner. And in 1 Kings 19, we pick up what is happening for him. And we have him leaving his servant in Bathsheba, uh, I should say, and he, he travels for the day into the wilderness. Uh, and when he stops, he stops under a broom tree. Um, and you know, actually, when you look at pictures, what a broom tree is, it looks more like a shrub. To be, you know, it's sort of very spindly and... and but anyway, he, he stops there and then he says these, these words. He says, I've had enough, Lord. 
I don't know. Take my life. I'm, I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. I, you know, he is, you know, he, he's, he's gone from this amazing high and he's now in this incredibly low. And he's not in a healthy place right at that moment. And so what he does, he goes to sleep. But God doesn't leave it at that. Uh, again, this, this always amazes me. An angel was sent to him to tell him to get up and eat. And, and I, love, I love how it says, get up and eat. And he looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. Now, if you've been running around all day, you know, that water would probably be really nice. And, you know, freshly baked bread. And so, what's he do? He eats. And then he goes back to sleep again. So, he's obviously exhausted. But God, again, doesn't leave it there. Because we're told in verse 7, the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So, here, here is God caring for the need of Elijah. And then amazingly, he gets up, he ate and he drank, and the food actually gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai. And I go, wow, that is some meal. And he came to a cave where he spent the night, and it's that cave where he hears the gentle whisper of God's voice. God is caring for Elijah, not just spiritually, but he cared for him, his physical needs. And he'll go on to care for his emotional and spiritual health as well. God cares about us. And I, I just, there's so many examples like this in scripture. Uh, another one which I love is the Timothy. Uh, the Timothy passage, thank you. Uh, the Timothy passage um, that Paul, when he's writing his letter to Timothy, uh, which shows about God's concern as well. Now, I know Paul wrote one Timothy, you know, like, you know, Paul wrote it, but I also am a firm believer that all scripture is inspired by God uh, and that, you know, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the word has been written, and that this reflects part of God's character about God's nature. So in chapter five, we have Paul giving Timothy some advice. And, and if you read through it, it's, a, it's a, you know, some pretty heavy advice. He says, you know, verse 21, I solemnly command you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus and the highest angels. I mean, you know, no pressure, Timothy. But I am saying here, really seriously, in the most serious way I can, obey though these instructions without taking sides or showing favoritism to anyone. He's been really serious about this. And then he goes on to 22, never be in a hurry to, uh, about appointing a church leader. Do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. And then in 24, you got... Uh, he has that thing, remember the sins of some people are, are obvious, leading them to, to certain judgment, but then others whose sins will not be revealed until later. And the same way about good deeds, they will eventually come to light. So in the midst of this pretty heavy advice comes verse 23, where Paul says, uh, Timothy, look after your stomach. Now, to me, it's, I, 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 as I'm re I read that, I go, well, left field, you know, sort of thing. Like, it's, it's almost, if I was writing this, this would probably be the PS. By the way, Timothy, look after yourself. But no, in the midst of giving this really, you know, serious advice about how to be a good leader to, to Timothy, he says, by the way, look after yourself. You know, don't drink only water. You ought to drink a little wine for the sake of your stomach because you are sick so often. Uh, you know, you think, Timothy, you, in order to do this stuff, you, you need to take care of yourself as well. 
And I just find it amazing that in, you know, there's this great you know, insights and there's a great statements of, of importance and comes this, what would seem to be really a side note of look after yourself. When you stop and think about it, if Timothy is so sick so often, how is he actually going to be able to do these things? So, you know, Paul says you need to care for yourself. Sometimes we can give the impression that the Christian faith is only about spiritual things. Well, it's not. I mean, God is concerned about our whole being, and therefore our faith is to care about every aspect of who we are and, 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 and what we do. It's meant to actually cover every single bit of our lives. There's not a single area of our life that God is not interested in and that we'll, he's not speaking into. He is the God of all of us. And we need to remember like the way that we, we treat ourselves has a reflection and should be, has a reflection on our faith and should reflect our faith because uh, hopefully as we see, we need to be taking care of of our bodies and our minds and our soul. Paul gives a fair bit of advice actually along the way. He gets up there and he says uh, to the Corinthians, uh, he was teaching them uh, about staying away from <coughs> sexual sin. And in verse 18, he says quite forcibly, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. And then in verse 9, he, he adds a, another line of reasoning to why he's saying, look, you know, you, you run from this. He, he teaches that the Holy Spirit resides within them. That when we come to faith, that, you know, the Holy Spirit takes up residence, God takes up residence within us. And, uh, and so the faith in the God that they have means that now, you know, they become, you know, as, as Paul will say, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And and they should avoid mistreating that temple, which is their bodies. In this case, fire, sexual immorality. You know. Yet I would say the principle applies to anything that can cause us harm. You know, if we're doing something that is causing harm to our bodies, it's, it's not good for us. I think Paul would not hold back in saying, run from that, you know, because, you know, you, you, you have the Spirit of God residing within you. And then he goes on to remind them that they're actually not their own, like they don't own themselves, which, you know, is really probably very politically incorrect nowadays. Um, we, in, in our society, which says, well, no, I have total rights to do with my body what I like. Um, you know, but Paul says, no, if you, if you actually have made a faith commitment if you decided that jesus is worth following and you've committed yourself to to him you, you actually are going to be bought at a high price um, you're not your own because he believed that you know we were bought and paid for by christ uh, by god handing over his son jesus christ uh, to be tortured and executed on a roman cross something that we're going to remember after the service and that, that this ultimate sacrifice paid the ransom price for slaves who had sin as their master and who are now set free. And since you're no longer slaves to sin and, and belong to God, we need to pay respect, uh, which is due to God for the grace and the love that has been shown to us by Jesus' sacrifice. And so he says, you know, you must honour God with your body now. And, yeah, and so therefore we need to think about how do we look after this body? If I'm going to honour God with this body, you know, you know, it's not too bad a body actually. It's, you know, um, it's not definitely a long way from perfection. But how, how am I going to, this body, with all its imperfections, seek to honour God? There used to be the, uh, the idea that it really didn't matter what you did with this body because it was all spiritual. It was the spiritual stuff that just mattered. And Paul says, no, 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 no. 
that is, that is that is a separation god is holistic you need to be thinking about your physical well-being as well as spiritual issues he goes on in um in the philippians which by the way is probably a passage that you have um, heard or hopefully come across a number of times and it says there now dear brothers and sisters one final thing uh, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise keep putting it into practice all you've learned and received from me everything you heard from me and saw me doing then god of then the god of peace will be with you you know paul encourages the philippians to to let their minds continually dwell on the positive virtues that he mentions here and in so doing he's actually uh, challenging them to take an active role in renewing uh, their minds you know he doesn't say you know dear brothers and sisters uh sit back and relax and god's just going to pour all these good things into your life you know, he says no you have to fix your thoughts you have to you have to actually make a conscious choice you have to you have to decide what you're going to think about and he you know and he's picking up the idea that what you actually think about determines what you'll do And it was an important goal in his letter that uh, that the Philippians and, to be honest, us too, develop a thought life that is like Christ. Think like Christ, therefore do what Christ will do. Now, Paul knew two things help us to do that. First is practice it. Keep putting it into practice. Um, it is great to say, yeah, I'm going to think about good things. And then not practice it. You might do it for a day, you might do it for a couple of days, but I need to keep practicing it. And the reality is to think about well, these good things, these that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable and, and uh, excellent and worthy of praise. Uh, in our culture, that is tough. So every day we need to be trying to practice that. And the second thing he says is an example. Find an example now he presents himself as an example and i must admit i when i tend to read this i go well you know paul aren't you um, promoting yourself a little bit there uh, but when you stop and think we're fortunate we we have here the written word they had the living word being worked out and lived out in front of them they didn't have the written word you know she says you know uh, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. That was their scriptures. And it's just a great reminder that a, finding an example of someone who's doing that, thinking about the good things and seeing that worked out in their life, that's someone we need to be following. And go, oh, yeah. Now, I've used Nan Street uh, as an example so many times. You, you know, you're probably over it, 92 years of age turning up at church and saying, guess what I learned in Matthew 6? I'm going, if I can be get to 92, I'll be amazed. But if I can get to 92 and I'm still excited about learning from the Sermon on the Mount at 92, uh, you know, that's, that's what I want to be like. Finding the example. He's giving a healthy example of what it means to follow Jesus, which, by the way, then says, well, <clears throat> what sort of example might we be presenting? as well but that's just a little bit of side note and the, the last last passage that i just want us to, to think about is one again you probably know really really well uh it's romans 12 and at the beginning paul pleads with us to give our bodies to god because of what god has done for us you know he's not saying anything new he's just saying you know we are to be a living and holy sacrifice much like what our lord jesus was like I mean, when you think about it, our Lord's Jesus was uh, a sacrifice for us. And he's, he's saying, you know, we are meant to be living. Uh, you know, Christians, by the way, are not the walking dead. You know, we are meant to be alive, full of life and holy. In other words, set aside for God's purposes, being living sacrifices. And he warns about actually buying into the behavior and customs of this world rather than being transformed uh, by God into being like our Lord Jesus. 
And in verse three, there's a principle that is really, I think, very helpful. That's what I've highlighted here. He says, be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves, not by others, not by your own ideas or anything, but by the faith God has given you. We need to be honest with ourselves. The reality is only you and God know how accurately you are going and how well you're actually going and how healthy you actually are. And of the two, by the way, God has the better idea. So if I'm a believer, it is important for me to follow God. Therefore, I need to honestly look at how I'm going. And, and in that honesty, it's, you know, there is a danger of, of getting up there and going, oh, I'm not doing good enough. I'm not doing well enough. Well, I, I want to let you in on, the, on something. We'll never be good enough. We'll never be, you know, we'll never get it totally right. We'll, that is not what God is God saying, no. Be honest and saying, you know what? I can't do that. I need God's help in order to do the, that. And I'm going to do the best I can at that. Yeah. Classic example, prayer. You know, uh, since we looked at one of the rebooting, re rebooting is, is with prayer. You know, sometimes we go, oh, I should be praying more. Well, okay, if that's true, then how are you and God going to do that? And isn't it amazing? You, you prayed a minute more than yesterday. You've improved. You've done better. You, know, you will not probably be able to pray, you know, go from praying five minutes today to praying you know, 10 hours a day overnight. It takes practice. It takes being honest with ourselves about where I'm at now and where I seek to be with God's help. So he says, look, honest evaluation of yourselves and measure it by the faith that he has given you. Yeah. The way I do it, do this evaluation is by saying, well, Lord, this is my faith. Uh, I'm going to look at my life. Uh, this is where I, I believe I'm at. And I, I'm asking you to help me to grow in, in Christ. Uh, I, I want to look at my, how I'm going physically and, and how I'm treating my body. I want to look at how I'm looking you know, with my mind and how, you know, am I working, uh, am I feeding it stuff that is helpful to me or destructive? You know, the fact is my faith also affects my emotional state. Do I know the difference between joy and happiness? Between short-term pleasure and long-term contentment so paul says be honest in your evaluation of yourselves and you your faith is your faith of doing that self-check so when it comes to self-care our faith plays a really crucial role now i want to say why i chose self-care as the last one of this series We can sometimes run ourselves into the ground trying to do things for God. Now, maybe God has called you to do that, but I actually believe God has called us to long-term ministry. And in, in order to do long-term ministry, we need to be caring for ourselves as well as caring for others. There is a danger, of course, that over-focusing on self-care will lead to self-indulgence. You know, it, it's, it's, we, we, as human beings, we can run to one extreme or the other. You know, okay, I'm going to go into self-care mode. Forget you lot. I'm in the self-care mode. Well, that's not what God calls us to do. But neither does he, you know, the danger of actually not focusing on self-care is that we will burn ourselves out and potentially we will die spiritually. 
because we become disenchanted, we become exhausted, become emotionally just wrung out, and we go, God, I, I can't do this anymore. I want to die. I'm certain Elijah and the desert. So self-care is an important aspect of our Christian faith. Part of that self-care, by the way, is having people around us who will care for us as well and caring for those around us as well. So a couple of questions about self-care for you to think about. How you, how's your physical health? Is there something that you need to change or something you need to start doing or something you need to stop doing? Now, one of the aspects about physical health, if you're getting older, you cannot do the things you used to do when you're 20. You know? Uh, I know I do not bounce as well when I fall off something as I used to. You know, I know that you know I could jump off the back of a ute and no problems. You know, and there. Nowadays, I look at some young guy doing that and go, "You wait, you wait. You'll be climbing off very carefully." You know. There may be things that we need to stop doing physically because they're harmful to us that we've done out of habit. And that may mean that we need to restart doing things. We'll do things differently than how we used to or change how we do things. So how, how am I, how's my physical health? And that could include diet, that can include exercise, a whole range of uh, different things. You know, I've got the picture there of going for a walk. Um, you know, but asking that question physically, is there something that I need to change, God? Mentally, my mental health. What am I feeding my mind with? Is it good for me? And by the way, that doesn't mean that you, you, know, you, you go off and uh, you know, have to sort of read some book on... Uh, clinical psychology, you know, to you know, make sure how you were going. It's just, what am I doing to feed my mind, to encourage my mind? I, I put the uh, crossword puzzle up there. Yeah, games, things like that. Things that you know that I can think about. Uh, you know, puzzles, uh, reading, a whole range of different things. But what am I feeding? You know, is what am I feeding my mind with, and is it good for me? Uh, my emotional health. Yeah. Am I actually enjoying life? Uh, am I doing things that make me feel good and that are also good for me, by the way? You know? uh, there's some things that can make us feel good that are not necessarily good for us. But you know, what am I you know, feeding into my life that is helping me emotionally? What makes me laugh? What makes me smile? Am I doing those things? You know, if, if I happen to you know, know that I love sunrises, you know, which is not me. Obviously, this is not an example about me. But if I love sunrises because I, it just really, it sets my day in such a positive light. You know, seeing the sun come up and be able to pray, you know, all of that. When was the last time I did that? You know, to, to feed myself and care for my emotional well-being. And, and my spiritual health, am I caring for my soul? Yeah. I like the one, reading the Bible maybe on the beach. Yeah. Yeah, just going somewhere and just you know, praising God for his creation. Uh, am I doing things that will help my soul? God cares about us. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, holistically. We need to do that for ourselves so that then we can do that for others as well. So let's think about rebooting our faith and using our faith in regards to the area of self-care. Let's pray. Lord, you stepped into this world 
uh, you came, you, you saw people who were hungry and you fed them. You saw people who were sick and you, you healed them. Uh, you often saw someone who was physically sick, but you saw the emotional and spiritual issues uh, there and you spoke into that. Uh, just your life is an example of caring for the whole person. And you cared for yourself. You took time out. You, when you're hungry, you wanted something to eat. Yeah. Lord, may our faith help us to be honest about how we're looking after ourselves so that we can then look after others that are around us that we can be examples of what it means to be healthy. We be examples of what it means to follow you and that our faith is impacting every part of our life. So Lord, I, I know that there is the very likelihood that we'll leave here today and we'll, we'll finish being online and, and something will happen that will distract us from that question but i ask holy spirit that this week you keep bringing to mind the question of how am i really caring for myself is the way that i'm doing things the way i'm thinking about things healthy for me and drawing me closer to you lord or is it self-indulgence work on us improve our health emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually, so that we can be the people of God. I ask that in your precious name. Amen.